Thank you, Leanne. Uh, welcome everybody to worship this morning. Uh, my name is Adam Cresswell and I'm joining you again uh, this week uh, and we'll be in, in July a, a little bit as well. Uh, and uh, love being able to worship with you last week uh, and excited to, to do it again. Um, are there any announcements? Uh, I know, especially with Glenn Morris, often there's also call for birthdays or anniversaries. Last week, it was the big 5-0 for the Grams. Uh, are there any announcements or celebrations? I haven't heard of any. My parents are celebrating their 43rd wedding anniversary this week. Nice. Wayne and Cindy McComb. Awesome. Congrats to them. Okay, awesome. Well, if there aren't any others, uh, uh, let's uh, have the passing of the peace. And as always, it's, um, it's going to be wonderful when we're able to uh, do it in person again, but uh, it's no less powerful with the spirit of God to do it on uh, on Zoom from our uh, individual uh, locations here. So may the peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> and it's extra weird just seeing everybody mouth it on the mute thing, but I, I did see it. So yeah, and Leanne's coming in on the chat. So there you go. Perfect. Um, join me in our call to worship this morning. Come Holy Spirit, the wind of God who distributes power evenly. Come Holy Spirit, our advocate, our counselor. Come Holy Spirit who highlights and amplifies who we truly are as beloved children of creator. Come Holy Spirit, we repent of the ways we have erased or washed away others instead of celebrating them and who they are. Come, Holy Spirit. This space is yours. We offer it freely in love and awe. May we receive your Holy Spirit in this place. Amen. Uh, and uh, our opening prayer, which if you have the bulletin from the website, you can uh, pray the all or you can just listen as well. So friends, let us worship God today. Today, we lean into challenging topics as disciples because God calls us to look at the world and its imperfections and its hurt and be part of building a better world, a world where it is on earth as it is in heaven. This morning, we will press into hear your spirit, the spirit which was unleashed at Pentecost in a brand new way. May we follow that spirit in the dance they invite us into. As we lean into all the different pieces of today's worship, we remember from our different places and spaces that we may feel united in the spirit, even as we are physically apart. God can bring people together no matter where they are or where they come from. Let us worship God. Our first hymn is uh, Consuming Fire by Tim Hughes. I think this is not from Voices United or More Voices. This is a newer one. And I will do my best to sing it. I'm transposing it. So I hope I don't make too many note errors. Yeah. 
must be more than this. Oh, breath of God, come breathe within. There must be more than this. Spirit of God, we wait for you. Fill us with love, new we pray. Fill us anew, we pray. Consuming fire, fan into flame. A passion for your name. Spirit of God, fall in this place. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way with us. Come like a rushing wind, oh, clothe us in power from on high. Now set the captives free, leave us abandoned to your praise. Lord, let your glory fall, Lord, let your glory Consuming fire, fan into flame, a passion for your name. Spirit of God, would you fall in this place? Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way. Consuming fire, fan into flame, a passion for your Spirit of God, would you fall in this place? Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way with us. Come like the rushing wind, clothe us in power from on high. Now set the captives free. Leave us abandoned to your praise. Lord, let your glory fall. Lord, let your glory fall. Consuming fire, fan into flame. A passion for your need. Spirit of God, would you fall? That was awesome. Thank you so much, Lynn. Uh, and I believe Deb has our scripture for this morning, which is going to sound familiar. The scripture today is Acts 2, verses 1 to 12 from the New Revised Standard Version. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from the heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Gal Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native tongue? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phygia, 
and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Lovely, thank you. Uh, let's pray before we get into the message. Uh, God, we gather this morning <clears throat> from our various uh, places and spaces uh, to center our hearts um, on you. Uh, and uh, you call us to uh, a life that is uh, uh, modeled after Jesus and that uh, makes, as, as we said earlier this morning, that makes earth look more like heaven. Um, and the recognition uh, in, in that, of course, is that um, that this place does not always uh, look like heaven. Uh, and we, uh, we uh, have a, an imperfect and at times quite broken uh, world. Uh, and so uh, we need to be able to look on that, uh, to be able to know how do we build um, this better world that you're calling us to, that you know is, um, is possible and that you, you have faith in us, God, that we are capable of, of building through your power. Um, so give us the courage today to... Um, to hear your voice uh, and to lean into uh, challenging topics uh, as we look at um, uh, what is uh, dominating, uh, rightly dominating our, our headlines right now um, and ask what, uh, what steps can we take um, uh, in a very broken world and, and with our neighbors, uh, particularly our, our neighbors uh, who, are of indigenous, who are indigenous or of indigenous descent. Uh, and so as we look into that God, uh, we just ask you to give us the uh, peace and courage uh, to lean in this morning uh, and to hear your voice, uh, not mine or my words, um, but to, that it would be your voice ringing through. Amen. So last week, we, uh, as was uh, for those who were there, we looked at a very familiar scripture, the same one that, that we just read, um, and we're, we're going to look at it and dive in again uh, today. Uh, and last week, we uh, looked at the good news of the Pentecost story, that it uh, gives us uh, the, 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 the faith, the assurance that God loves diversity, that what makes uh, us different and unique uh, makes the picture more whole. We use the example of the stained glass window um, of many colors and shapes and uh, um, and even textures and hues uh, that forms a more beautiful picture because of its diverse pieces. Um, and we read through that scripture uh, and understood that's that's how Holy Spirit enters uh, in a whole new way to the world. Um, Holy Spirit is, is ushered in, and we might even say, when you hear that, unleashed in, in a new way um, by uh, these different languages being spoken and native languages uh, being heard, um, and not one uniform uh, language, not one uniform uh, being spoken not one uniform language being heard, but many and, and native languages being part of the miracle, um, part of what God is doing. Uh, and, uh, and we can hold on to that as good news that that, that which makes us unique uh, is what God will use. And in fact, amplify uh, in order to create these beautiful, um, the more beautiful whole um, with all these different pieces. Um, and so uh, we looked at the good news and, and it's important as well when we look at um, the good news, we, we know that there's a call on that. There's a call on our lives as I just, uh, we, as we prayed today, um, we're, we're called to make heaven look more like earth. Um, and and uh, that's because, uh, or sorry, make earth look more like heaven. Um, uh, and so as we lean into the good news, we recognize that there's a call on our lives because this place does not always uh, look like heaven. Um, and over the past few weeks, we've had the very um, uh, tragic and uh, and uh, harrowing revelations of the residential schools uh, uh, having so many um, mass graves and unmarked graves. Um, and so it's important for us, uh, as hard as it is, um, to look at that and and ask what is our 
next steps? What, how do we respond um, as people of God, uh, as, as disciples, as, as people of faith? Uh, because when we enter into this whole um, following Jesus thing, this, this whole thing called the church, this project, um, we uh, choose uh, to say, Jesus, you will be the center um, of, of, of my life, but also of our lives collectively. And we will respond in the way um, that you've uh, taught us. Um, um, and by, by knowing Jesus, by knowing the character of God, um, by knowing Holy Spirit. Um, and so uh, I think that it's, there's a lot of application pieces when we go uh, back into the story. Um, because we've explored this story where multiple languages are spoken and native languages are heard uh, and affirmed. Um, and yet we have seen uh, through uh, <clears throat> knowing the history of these schools and both the federal government and the church, including the United Church's role, um, that uh, clearly uh, that um, spirit of Pentecost uh, not only was, was not fulfilled in so many ways, um, but was was very much betrayed um, in, in many ways. Um, we know as people of faith that sin exists, that sin is real, that this is not a perfect world and that we uh, fall short, um, we harm. Uh, there's sin in me that runs through my veins um, and there's collective sin in our systems and our structures <clears throat> and our histories. And although we're Christian, uh, that doesn't mean <laughs> that all of a sudden we've stopped sinning. That doesn't mean that we've actually, uh, now, now we've figured it out. It actually simply means that we recognize that there's something uh, in us that needs, um, that needs healing, um, that needs transformation, um, that needs change. Um, uh, I have not in my life always followed Jesus' ex example. Uh, I've gone off uh, on my own path, chosen my own way. I've harmed others. Um, and as a collective, we as the church have not always followed Jesus' example. Um, uh, we have harmed. Uh, and that is well, part of what we're confronting with the revelations in, re in residential schools. Um, and uh, even if, for those who, of us who aren't, weren't actually physically present, um, when we enter into the church, we're, we're, we're sort of being adopted into uh, a family. And so that's something that we have to be able to wrestle and reckon with is um, this family, this this, this movement, this church that we're joining um, has, has these histories. Um, and so we need to be able to look at them and learn from them um, and seek uh, reconciliation because that's a key theme um, that, that Jesus brings up is how do we heal? How do we love each other? Um, and that's kind of where we're sitting today. Um, we explored the good news um, that diversity is affirmed in God, and yet that there's something in us that aims for sameness. Uh, and I think that's that's one way of, of, of understanding the, the sin that it had, had gone on for so many years, um, is, is, is wanting um, to wash away um, what made um, these people, these, these children, these indigenous um, siblings of ours uh, unique. Pentecost is that sharp reminder that God is, is, a, is against that which washes away or erases difference, and specifically difference of language, difference of culture, heritage. Um, this story should have been the stake in the ground against uh, what went on for so long. Um, against any colonizing force that would seek to, to wash away uh, someone's uh, identity. Um, and so it's important for us to, to look at that and, and really sit with that um, so that um, we can be healed and transformed and affirmed in our diversity and so that we, can, we, we don't make the same mistakes again. Um, and uh, in the life of faith, it's not just um, an entry point into understanding ideas and thinking a certain way, but a call to live in a certain way. And so uh, uh, this morning, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, what can we do um, as next steps? Um, how can we uh, be informed by Christ 
uh, and seek to love our neighbor, uh, and particularly um, those of us who are non-Indigenous, to love our Indigenous neighbors who are hurting um, and, uh, and, and find reconciliation and right relations. Um, and so there's a few things that I uh, wanted to uh, go through and, and kind of look at how, what scripture can uh, show us about possible next steps. Uh, as I kind of touched on earlier, um, the first thing is to recognize that, uh, that sin is uh, pervasive everywhere we go. Um, and that again includes uh, the church. We don't get it right uh, every time. Uh, and that is very much part of the story of scripture. When we look at the Old Testament, um, it's a, it's a story of, um, of, of, of Israel kind of, uh, being with God and then going Israel's own way and then back with God and then going their own way. And, and the prophets throughout the old Testament are there, um, sort of as these, um, as these truth tellers, when, when Israel, the people of God fall off the mark. And in fact, often it's that Israel forgets, um, forgets the poor, um, or, or, or uh, th those who were oppressed and let out of Egypt become oppressors themselves. And so we have this history in scripture um, that says not only is uh, uh, the church and the people of God not perfect, but actually part of the history is this pattern of falling short of the call that God puts on the church. And that original call for Israel um, in in Deuteronomy is for to be a, uh, uh, that Israel would be a bless a nation that would bless other nations. That's that's kind of the original definition in the Old Testament of what God wanted from. It wasn't called the church at that point, but from the people of God, a community that would bless others, that would help others flourish, um, and uh, and that's that's still the call of the church today. Um, and so uh, one of the first things as we look at how um, at next steps is to just acknowledge that, that we uh, as the church, yes, have, have, been, have been part of this and uh, that we're seeking to uh, make right um, what has, has been wrong. Um, and we can ask these questions, uh, continue to ask these questions uh, in the context of, of scripture. Psalm 103 Verse six proclaims the Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Um, in the book of Amos, which is another of the prophets of the Old Testament, in verse 24 of chapter five, it says, let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. <clears throat> in the book of James, um, which is in the New Testament, true religion is defined this way. It says, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And just one more in Micah 6, 8, the prophet Micah says, he has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require, require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. And so those are just five scriptures, but the truth is there are over uh, 3,000 scriptures, 3,000 verses in the Bible that are concerned with uh, justice and specifically justice for those who have been oppressed for the widow or for the widow, for the orphan, uh, for those who have been left out in the cold. <clears throat> and so the second piece uh, is to recognize that um, part of, our, of living out our faith um, is to be seekers of justice. Um, that is one of the core themes throughout scripture and throughout the life of Jesus um, is to seek justice um, for those who have been uh, hurt, for those who have been uh, pushed aside. Um, and so we can uh, understand our faith, not simply as um, something that, uh, although it should fill us um, and make us feel more whole and joyful, um, but that our faith should also be this driving force um, that has us seeking justice um, in, our, in our lives. 
And that's why I kind of kept coming back to this uh, Pentecost story for the past few weeks, um, because we see um, diversity affirmed in, in it. And specifically, we see uh, native languages affirmed. Um, and one of the greatest uh, injustices uh, was that, of course, uh, over the past hundreds of years, um, the languages of indigenous people in this nation have been uh, washed away. Um, and the church has been part of that. Uh, and so as seekers of justice, we can acknowledge um, this thing that we're part of uh, was involved in that. And we need to uh, be able to be um, there and show up uh, and say, um, we, we, want to make things right and we want to see transformation and healing. Um, I want to also uh, mention that there's some traps that we can fall into, um, some things that that I want to suggest that we, we must not do as we respond um, here. The first is, is this, we, we mustn't let our gestures and our symbols become the extent of our response. And so what I mean by that is that uh, symbols and gestures are incredibly important. It was, it was re I think it was very uh, good and right that flags were at half mast for, um, for in, in some cases at my, in my neighborhoods um, in the community centers, they're still at half mast over the past month. Um, but we must not let just gestures and symbols become the extent of the response. We need to be able to seek action um, and say, how can we um, show up for uh, indigenous communities um, in the way of Jesus? Um, because when we look at the life of Jesus, we see that's what Jesus did. There were great symbols that were part of Jesus' ministry, but Jesus also showed up. And I'm, as an example, when Jesus visited the leper colony, uh, outside uh, of the city. Back in this day, lepers were a community um, that were not able to be near anybody else um, for fear of uh, spreading the disease. And the gesture that Jesus made was uh, when uh, one of these individuals uh, came up, Jesus touched them and showed this important gesture um, that flipped the social norms upside down. So the gesture was there, but then also Jesus went with them and stayed with them and, and talked with them and, and ate with them. Um, and so there was actually the action as well of forming relationships. Um, so gestures are and symbols are important, but we must also look and say, who are, who are the neighbors? Who are the, the indigenous folks in our community or our cities? Um, and how can we get to know them? Because Jesus calls us to love our neighbor and we can't, love our neighbor if we don't know our neighbor. Sorry, there's just a cart going by. Um, we must also not let uh, tears and emotions be the extent of our response. And I want to be really clear, processing our emotions and grieving and lamenting what has happened is incredibly important. Um, but we must not let the cathartic um, emotional experience of ourselves simply be where our response ends. <clears throat> and again, we must be able to show up uh, and, uh, and be part of action. <clears throat> and here's the catch for, for the action part. We also, as uh, for those of us who are non-Indigenous and especially those of us who are, are Christian like myself, we must not charge in and take the lead. And, and uh, we must understand that as uh, folks who have so much learning to do, uh, the best thing we can do is form relationships, show up, um, uh, learn. And uh, if we're in uh, a community or, or <clears throat> a city where there's, uh, uh, where there's uh, action uh, being uh, led by indigenous people, we wanna show up and say, how can, how can we help? Um, so often uh, uh, Christians have rushed in and, and had ideas of how to, how to help. Um, and uh, that can often go very, very wrong. Um, so we wanna start by listening and being led rather than taking um, the lead. Uh, and our example for this is, um, is that Jesus lived a servant life. And Jesus says in scripture, um, 
I came not to be served, but to serve. Uh, and the, the image that stands out in my mind is uh, Jesus washing the feet uh, of the disciples that, that uh, uh, when they came for the last supper, Jesus knelt down and revealed himself as, as the King of Kings, not with sword and shield, but with towel and basin and washed the feet of the disciples. And, and this was mind blowing for the disciples that Jesus would stoop and wash their feet. Jesus is inviting us into the kind of life where we show up and we serve and we offer what we have. Um, and I think this is very uh, important as we look to how next steps we can take. Um, we can ask, how can we serve? How can we show up? Um, when we engage with uh, our neighbors, we seek to uh, show up in a way that helps them flourish. And if that's almost the, 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 the most core way we can boil down what, what's our purpose here as, as disciples, we want to see our neighbors flourish. We wanna to flourish too. We wanna to see people and God's creation flourish. <clears throat> Jesus has shown us the way to do this. We can confess that the world is not the way it should be, that we are not always the way we should be, that we have sin in us. We can seek justice and take action to build that world of justice. <clears throat> and we can serve our neighbor and serve our neighbor in the form of servanthood. And we can find along the way that as disciples, we are following the Jesus who stooped down to wash the feet of the disciples, but never ever washed away their identity. Let's pray. Uh, God, as we look to you for guidance in complicated matters, in, um, in difficult times, uh, would you give us uh, clarity? And as the spirit stirs us, to respond um, and to show up for our neighbors and to serve our neighbors, would we do that in the way of Jesus? And may we see the face of Jesus in our neighbors, um, whoever they are. Uh, and particularly, uh, as we think about this topic today, would we see um, the face of Jesus in our indigenous siblings who are, who are fighting for justice and truth and who are inviting us to show up? Um, and, and asking for us to, um, to listen and learn. May we follow that Jesus who came to serve. May we follow Jesus who was a, a persecuted minority under, under the Roman Empire. We follow Jesus who was arrested and put to death. May we follow Jesus whose resurrection called his people to action. And may we follow that Jesus who washes feet and affirms diversity, never washing away someone's identity. Amen. Um, our uh, prayers of the people uh, is next. So, uh, uh, if you have uh, prayers that you'd like to insert into the chat uh, or, uh, or uh, unmute yourself and speak, you can feel free to do that now. And remembering we can also have uh, celebrations in this time as well. I would like to keep Marilyn Klein in our prayers as she moves from Glen Morris to her new home of Winst in Winston Park in Kitchener. And she's been such a wonderful influence and part of the life and work of our community. I think keep holding her safe in our thoughts and in our prayers would be great. Awesome, yeah. I'm going
going to pray. And again, if there's any that uh, come to you and feel free to en enter it into the chat and I'll, I'll read it there too. <clears throat> so God, we pray uh, for our community uh, that <clears throat> even in this time where we're so far apart that it's, uh, it's important to know uh, that we are praying for one another. Um, and so we pray for Marilyn Klein uh, and for uh, this change in season, uh, uh, this change in the season of life, uh, that uh, it is a, a smooth and, and positive transition and that um, it's great to know that uh, uh, Winston Park is, is not too far down the road. Um, and, and still, uh, that to me still feels like uh, kind of in the neighborhood. Um, and so we pray for that um, uh, transition. And also we just take a moment to celebrate all of the um, all of the work uh, and life uh, that Marilyn has, has put into Glen Morris uh, as, as a community. Um, yeah, and for, uh, for Jen's neighbor, Joe, um, after a heart attack and who is now back in hospital. Uh, so God, we pray for healing, um, for your healing hands to be upon that situation uh, and for uh, for the family as well to have, have peace and, and uh, for positive um, results coming there. Uh, also for Nora Futon's son-in-law, Danny, who is facing radiation treatments this summer after cancer surgery. And so, yeah, again, we just pray for, um, for healing uh, and for the, uh, the doctor and the staff team, uh, the hospital team around them to have, um, uh, to have uh, wisdom uh, in how they proceed uh, and for uh, healing and, and peace healing for uh, Nora Futon's son and peace for Nora as they go through this um, uh, very challenging and often very scary uh, time. And yeah, for the, for the children and, and the uh, folks who, uh, the bodies that have been now found in uh, BC and Saskatchewan and, and yes, will be found in other communities. Um, we pray for, um, uh, we pray for the indigenous communities and those communities uh, as a whole. Um, that they would uh, be able be able to grieve uh, and lament um, and have the space uh, to do that. And we pray um, that you would be uh, with them, God, in that, um, knowing that you, uh, time after time in scripture, we see you are the God who is, who is with us, um, that in our grief and our lament, um, the good news that we have is that we are, um, things will not be fixed instantly, but we know we are not alone. Um, and that you are with us. And yeah, for the, the victims of the, the building collapse in, uh, in Miami, Florida uh, as well, that there, is, um, uh, that there is able to be answers uh, there um, and for that community to be able to heal um, from that horrific incident as well. And I also pray for um, my friend, uh, Becky, who, who her dad is undergoing uh, chemotherapy right now as well, and is, is in the hospital this week. Um, so I lift up uh, healing uh, for Terry, her dad, and uh, peace for Becky and Monica, uh, her mom, and their family as well. And so God, as we pray um, these things, we just continue to uh, recognize the need um, for you in our lives. Um, because it's a tough, uh, challenging world, uh, and not every uh, day um, is filled with uh, joy. Um, and it is important to, to be able to grieve and lament. <laughs> and what we can remember as we, uh, as we lament is that you too shed tears. Um, uh, and we remember that night in Gethsemane um, before you went to the cross, Jesus, um, that you spent uh, in grief and lament and prayer. Um, and so we know that uh, you have experienced this too, Jesus, and we ask you to be with us in it. Amen. Our operatory hymn is Voices United number 541. Oh. 
And God, even uh, though we're not passing around a plate in person, we pray for uh, the offerings that we have, knowing that um, whether they are our, our, our time uh, or our talent or our treasures, um, uh, that we offer what we have to you, um, again, to build uh, your kingdom and to make this world um, here on earth look more like heaven. And so we pray over the offerings uh, this week. And uh, our next hymn is Draw the Circle Wide. I think we accidentally muted Lynn. <laughs> Sorry about I that. I unmuted me again. <laughs> Draw the circle wide. Draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Got the step on. Round him all creation turns, nothing lost but held forever in God's gracious arms. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. So I, once again, I don't have an actual stained glass behind me, but I do have this um, piece of art. As you can see, I have quite a colorful piece of art behind me this morning. And so <clears throat> as we go out and uh, go out um, sitting with uh, the, the challenges in front of us um, and the, um, the recognition that, <clears throat> uh, as we said in our prayers of the people, I think, as, as Lynn mentioned, that... Um, uh, what is especially challenging is that we know that this will not be the last story um, of, um, of the, the legacy of the residential schools. <clears throat> and so as we go out, it's important for us to be able to sit with that uh, and acknowledge that and, and commit to going, how can we learn? Um, how can we show up and love our neighbors? Um, and hold that in one hand and as well, in the other hand, hold the truth of the good news that we know from what we talked about last week, which is that that picture with all the different pieces is possible. Um, that picture that God invites us into, um, we're all 
of the different shapes and textures and colors come together is possible. And so that's the one last piece I want us to remember as disciples is that we go out is that we don't live um, uh, without a deep hope, uh, knowing that uh, the resurrection of Jesus is our signal um, that uh, pain uh, and sin and death is not the last word that life and transformation and resurrection is what is here and yet not here, as our friends in the Anglican Church say. The kingdom that we're looking uh, at is, is at hand, Jesus says. Um, and so we hold on to the hope knowing that, yes, uh, it is possible. And for all the cynicism um, that is very easy and that I can even fall into of the world, as disciples, we proclaim, no, we believe that the picture God is inviting us into is possible uh, and that we are part of making it a reality. Jesus came, lived, died, and was resurrected. And the spirit of God and that spirit of Christ is in us today. And so as we confront the different pieces and the ones that are broken. Uh, may we hold on and remember that hope that we walk with the God who defeated death. Thanks be to God. Um.